In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to produce your project in two slightly unconventional formats. The first one is an animated format. You can choose between an animated GIF or an animated PNG. The second is an image sequence, which can be either a PNG series of still images or a series that end in JPG. Let's look at some of the options and some of the ways to use these tools most effectively. Before I do this in a project, I need to make sure I know the stats for my raw data. So I have this video clip, it's five seconds long and it simply waves. I'm going to right click on it in track number one and click on properties. And here I need to know what my frame rate is and what my resolution is. The source resolution is 1920 by 1080. The frame rate is 23.976. And I notice that I also have a file size here as an MP4 of 300 megabytes. Let's see how that compares with our output. I'm going to close that information panel out and then we'll click on produce. Next thing I want to do is choose my options. Now to use these, we go from our normal options in the production page. I usually use H.264 to my image button. When I click on the image button, I see I have these four options we'll cover in this tutorial. We'll start out with an animated GIF. And then we have different profile or quality sizes. We can go from 800 by 450 to 3840 by 2160. And then we have the number of frames per second we can use as well. So my native was 1920 by 1080. I'll keep that. The original was uh, 23.976. I'll go to 24. And that's as close as I can get. So I'm going to click on Start. It will render and will resume this video when it's finished rendering. Now we're going to click on the Back to Edit button. It will take a while to take our new file and populate it and put it inside our media room. And let's look at the properties as we exported it to a animated GIF. I'll right click on it, click on the properties button. It's 1920 by 1080. It's interesting. My frame rate came out as 10.91. I'm not sure why that happens, but that's the second time I've done this. My file size is 132 megabytes now in this format. I'll close it. There's no audio, of course, in the GIF. When I double click on it, my animated GIF plays in the preview screen. Let's compare that now by doing the same process again. We'll click on Produce. And this time we're going to produce it as an animated PNG file. So we go back to our production section. I'm going to click on Animated PNG. It wants to do 15 frames per second. Let's see what happens when I try to set it to 24. And we'll start again. I'll resume this when it's done production. When it's finished, we click on the Back to Edit button and it will repopulate my media room with the copy of the animated PNG file. And we can play it again like we did the other one. Let's stop our play and look at the properties of this one. In this case, it did keep the frame rate to 24 frames per second. So that's a difference, same aspect ratio, and my file size is 274 megabytes. Now let's look at the other options, which are rather interesting. Let's suppose that you have a video clip and you want to create some really nice images that you can use in Photo Director or any other photo editing program. And you want to take certain frames and pick the best frames and make a project out of it. Well, you can do that, or you can actually use the series as a slideshow, whatever you'd like to do. But let's look at how to do that using these options. I'm going to click on Produce again, and that will take us back to our production panel. And once we're in there, we're going to choose the last two options. Last one is the Image Sequence JPG. And here again, I'm going to try to match my original. Now here I have a 23.976, so I can match the frames per second rate, which will help me capture the frames, I think, better. And then I'm going to click on Start. It doesn't take very long to do this. And when it's done, instead of Back to Edit, I'm going to click on Open File Location. And when I click on that, it will show me 
all of the individual images I have that were part of that. Each frame is now turned into an image. I can click on it and get into this viewer and I can decide which image I might want to use if I want to edit it separately and use it for some other purpose. Or I can take all of the images that I have and use them as a slideshow or in some other format that I want to. So that is the byproduct of using this particular method. So I'm going to minimize that. We'll go back to our back to edit. And then when I look, I, I'm going to look for my still images here. And you notice what I don't have. They're, they don't all populate in this screen. Because for example, if you have 30 frames per second and you have a five second uh, clip that you're using this with, you're going to have a ton of images fill your room. It doesn't repopulate the room when you do this. So let's look at the other option. I'll produce the fourth time. And this time we're going to go not with a JPG, but we're going to go with a PNG. So I go to image sequence PNG and I can click my resolution. I'm going to go 23976, going to match the original. So it looks like it's shots of that. Instead of waves, I'm going to call this one W2 to separate it from the other ones. And we'll click on start. Again, this is a very rapid process. Basically it takes every single frame in that segment and it exports it as an individual image. And now when it's done, I'm going to click on open file location again. And here I see I have my PNGs instead of my JPGs. And again, it looks pretty much the same depending on what kind of file format you want as your output. And you can process them the same way as we did before. I'll minimize that, go back to edit, and you'll find once again that it does not fill your room with these particular images. But it's a neat way to take the individual frames of a project in a series, use them together or use them separately. So that's one of the unusual ways we can export items from our project in CyberLink PowerDirector.